In this video, we are going to try out the next SAAS starter kit from Lee Robinson and we are going to check in the code to check what kind of practices was Lee following here and hopefully we are going to learn something from this project. First thing I'm going to do is to clone this repo on my local machine, git clone and I'm using the SSH link so I'm cloning the next SAAS starter.git and we are going into that directory so now we can check the readme file and we can see from the beginning that readme is looking really nice so that's already a good practice followed by lee and we can see all the features that we have here we can see the demo so if we go to a new tab here we can see how it looks so it should look like this also on my machine and then we have the tech stack, so it's using SJS, Postgres, Drizzle, Stripe, Shed CNUI, nice, everything that I love. So I think this one should be really great. And then we have getting started. So we already did this part with cloning the project and now we need to run it locally. So we need to use the included setup script to create our ENV file. So we are going to run this pmpm db setup command and let's see what are we going to get good thing also is to see that lee is using pmpm i really love that fact so here we have step one checking if stripe cli is installed and authenticated so it is installed i have it on my machine it's a good thing that we have detection for this one then setting up postgres do you want to use a local postgres instance with docker or a remote one i'm going to use the remote one because i have neon account and then you can find Postgres databases at Vercel.com marketplace, little bit of marketing for Vercel, and we need to enter our Postgres URL. So now here I'm going to copy my Postgres URL and place it inside, then we are going to the next step. So I had to enter my secret keys and I couldn't do it without exposing them here online. So what I did is I placed my neon database url and my stripe secret key so now that one is finished we have successfully finished this pmpm db setup first step and now we can go pmpm db migrate so i'm entering that one to my terminal and let's see what is going to happen so local package.json exists but node is missing so we need to do pmpm i and i think that one was missing probably from the readme yeah so that one should be added uh, so Lee didn't follow this one like he should. Okay, so now this one is good. Now we can run the previous command pmpm db migrate and we are activating our migrations. This one should create tables in my database. Nice, that one is working and we can do pmpm db seed. So I'm entering that one also and that is going to create a test account I think for us. Yes, initial user created and stripe products and what else prices nice so now we have this user and he has this password and we can go and log in and see how everything looks nice let's see so now we are entering pmpm dev going inside of our project on localhost 3000 nice so we have exactly the same page like we had on the demo from Lee on that GitHub on this URL here. Where was it here? And now everything should work. So let's try it out. So let's try to log in here. I'm going to sign up and sign into existing account. And we are going to use that user test at test.com and admin one, two, three, sign in. Let's see. What are we going to get? So now we should, yeah, here it is. Okay, so we have now some kind of dashboard and here we have our team subscription, current plan is free. Then we have our team members and we can invite a new team member. So let's try to manage subscription to see if, okay, this one looks nice. So this is the, these are the prices from Stripe that we had. So if we go to get started, we are going directly to the Stripe payment screen. Okay, that one is nice. So basically pricing is working automatically, at least I think it's working. 
Then on dashboard, we have the general, we can enter our name, so we can enter here org dev, for example, and save changes. And that one should work. If I refresh, we have org dev, so database connection is working and everything is working smoothly. Here we have our activity log. So we need, know we are signed up, then we updated our account, nice. And for security, we can change the password. So there are really a bunch of features inside of this SAS starter kit. I like it. And also the design is looking nice for the dashboard and also for the landing page. I would add maybe to this starter kit light and dark mode to make it just little bit better in terms of UI UX. So now the moment of truth and to see what is actually under the hood here. So I'm going to open the code from the next SAS starter. And first thing that we are going to check is the structure that Lee Robinson used. So we have, of course, app directory. I believe that this one is probably the Next.js 15, so let's try it out here. Okay, oh, he actually used 15.1.1 Canary. Oh, well, this one is a surprise. I thought that he's using the uh, latest version. Okay, then uh, we have in the app directory, we have the dashboard and inside we have all the pages. And interesting thing is that some components are inside of the app directory so he's not using like putting all the components inside the components directory he's putting some of them next to pages that's probably because this submit button is used only on this page and not now nowhere else so let's see yeah so that's the reason he's probably following the rule where if the component is used in only one place, then leave it next to that file. That's okay. I think that's a good thing. Only thing that I would maybe do is here, I would create a components directory like this. So my submit button is not exposed, but this one is also, of course, totally valid. Then we have here the terminal and this one is also a component that is used probably on this page. Okay, so with components, everything is uh, pretty much like the same like I do. But let's see here the API. So we have here API inside the app directory and there we have checkout route and webhook. So basically all the routes that are needed outside are inside the API directory and that's also everything by the documentation and then we have components so let's see there there we have only shad cn components so we have the ui directory this is the default way of creating directories for shad cn so there is only avatar button card drop down menu input label and radio group everything strictly shad cn okay then we have lib here we have the authentication and that one i'm really curious about what is used because there is not any dependency used for authentication, no next auth or something like that. So we have here the middleware, which is using basically, so here we can see that there are some variables that are declared, but never used. Then we have the schema, okay. And that one is used by Zod just to control like what kind of data is inside then we have so basically what lee is using here is just the like context inside a session here so we have here a session sign token okay so we are using jwt for creating a key and then we have here verify token with JWT verify. Okay. And then we have our session inside the cookies. Yeah, really, really interesting and simple way to create authentication. Like this one is nothing I ever seen. I'm usually like using clerk or some third party library, but this is really good to see that we can do it in this simple way on our 
like local just created like locally so here we have like a simplest compare passwords function and everything is pretty much simple nothing too complex really easy to read i really like the authentication i gotta say so here he is creating a context with user context and we have used user to get our current user that is currently logged in and based on that we can see which user is currently logged in and give like all the authentication rights and everything that is needed and i guess this user provider is used in layout yes here it is so it's basically wrapping up the entire project and we know exactly who is currently logged in into our application nice so i would say this is pretty awesome i'm definitely going to use this one in some of my next projects then we have the db here we only have the schema everything is in one file so no like separating the models and schema then we have the seed queries so this is interesting that queries are inside the db directory it's not somewhere like for example here some kind of actions or something like that it's just inside the queries but that's a good thing i used also this one on textual games so basically this one is let's say to imagine some mvc so here we are creating some kind of model and then we are using it through a controller and putting it to our view then we have here the migrations okay that one is pretty much automatic from uh drizzle and here we have some setup.ts so here what are we doing function question and this one is creating an interface for some input output okay this one is checking stripe cli oh so this is everything for the uh when you're starting with a project get postgres url okay yeah so this is the cli and setup of the project and then we have payments so here we have the standard actions.ts file where we have checkout action and customer portal action and we have stripe where we have like creating checkout session and all the things that are needed by stripe somehow stripe is always like the biggest file we have get stripe prices etc everything is working with stripe api so awesome i really like the um structure from lee it's simple and i think that simple is really important when you have some kind of like starter kit applications like this overall i think that the project is really great and i really like the simplicity behind it because there are so many features and the code is so simple like anyone can read it i know exactly now where would i go if i want to change something on my landing page or on my dashboard or even for my authentication and for everything i think that it's really great to use something like this if you are starting your own sas project or even better if you want to learn about coding in Next.js and this kind of technology, I think this is really a great start to clone this project on your machine, same like, like I did, and to check the code, to try to add some new feature or just to play around with it and to see how is everything created by Lee Robinson.